We see the Enterprise a decent amount in Season 2 of Star Trek Discovery. Now, the ship still has a very recognizable profile as the Enterprise, but there is something interesting going on here. What is this feature? This cutout on the nacelle pylons. What's this feature supposed to be? And yeah, I know that the real life explanation is just that the designers on this show simply like cutting shapes out of their ships, but if we're gonna take the design literally as a real ship that exists in that universe, you would imagine a feature like this to have some sort of function. But what function could a cutout like this possibly serve? And I can actually think of a few things. One of the first thoughts was that these are lightening holes. That's holes to make things lighter. And they're used all over the place in virtually any kind of vehicle. But particularly where weight is a major concern, such as aircraft, where ideally you want to remove as much material from the plane as possible without compromising its function. That is in certain circumstances. And if the hole is created to have edges or walls, you can actually sometimes increase the rigidity of a structure. It sounds kind of counterintuitive, but when you think about it, it makes perfect sense. And we can easily imagine the consequences of this by looking at the pylons. If we imagine pylons with no cutouts, there's really not much protecting the pylon from bending. The only thing that's really keeping these things rigid is the more narrow walls of the pylon. The green faces would bend incredibly easy if it weren't for the red faces, which can stand up to much, much more bending forces along this particular axis. And this is really intuitive stuff for us. We all know how much easier it is to bend metal this way than it is to bend it this way, which means that introducing a cutout here might make the pylon stronger at least under this particular stress, because you're sacrificing a relatively tiny bit of the weakest part of the pylon and essentially doubling the number of the strongest parts of the pylon. Before, a bending force had to overcome two perpendicular walls. Now it must overcome four. But the problem here is that this all assumes that there's no internal support structure in the pylon. What I just said would be true if the hull of the Enterprise was a self-supported structure with no internal skeleton. But most Star Trek experience has shown us that Starfleet ships are built with pretty traditional ribbing inside, which means that in theory it doesn't matter how many cutouts you add because the amount of internal support can be the same either way. And in theory, these cutouts could actually make the pylon weaker to other stresses such as twisting, because while before the internal ribs could span the entire higher width of the pylon, now with the cutouts they are interrupted, allowing the pylon to flex much more easily. But sometimes a less rigid structure is in fact what you want. Making the structure just as hard to bend but easier to twist might be a perfect design for the engineering needs of the Enterprise. But without enough information, it's an impossible call to make. We just don't know what the requirements are. But honestly, even though I've spent a lot of time on it, this explanation doesn't hold too much water. As it should be noted, on the Discovery Enterprise, the wide, flat faces of the pylon are in fact curved, and this slight arch is itself a very effective protection against bending, thus significantly reducing the importance of the thin, perpendicular faces of the pylons. But there is another consideration beyond simple structural stability, and that's heat. Getting rid of waste heat is a major concern in space, because heat doesn't radiate well at all without a medium. Space being a vacuum doesn't really cool things down really quickly. So I'm sorry, but all that sci-fi that shows people freezing within seconds of exposure to space, it's complete hogwash. So if we consider the electrical and mechanical components on a spacecraft, they're basically under a near constant threat of overheating. Now, of course, in the future, this waste heat might easily be recycled, eliminating the need for things like huge radiator panels like those found on the International Space Station. But assuming that there is some excess heat on the ship and a need to shed this excess heat, the most logical place to imagine this is in the pylons, particularly because the hottest part of the ship is probably going to be the warp plasma conduits that run through the pylons and into the nacelles. Considering that the plasma needs to be transported in physical conduits, which probably have a melting point, it would be in Starfleet's best interest to keep these conduits as cool as possible, to increase the amount of plasma that they can channel before failing. Shedding heat might be among the pylons' functions, as we see that each pylon actually has vents running its length. If these vents are radiators, that gives a little more credence to the idea that 
that the cutouts are simply an extension of this concept. But how does a cutout actually cool things down? Simply put, the cutout increases the surface area of the pylon. It might sound counterintuitive to increase the surface area by cutting holes into it, but indeed the surface area of the entire pylon has been increased by introducing a cutout, primarily because of how thick the pylons are. You're cutting out this much material and replacing it with this much material. A pylon with no cutouts has about 5,500 square meters of surface area, and with the cutouts it has 5,830 square meters of surface area, which is a 6% overall increase. It doesn't sound like much, but if that's how much more warp plasma you can put through the conduits, that just might give your ship the edge. So imagine a system where pipes of a coolant liquid are running around and away from the plasma conduits and toward the hull. The more hull area that this tubing interacts with, the more opportunity it has to shed its heat in the form of infrared radiation out into space. It's not much, but it's something, and is at least a somewhat plausible explanation for the cutout in-universe. Now, I'm sure I haven't considered everything, so I'd be interested to hear other theories and potential explanations, especially if you're more formally educated on these particular topics. I'd love to hear a more nuanced analysis on stuff like this. But that's all I have for today. Thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.